Greetings, everybody. Uh, welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. On October 4th, 1990, the country and the world were introduced to a group of beautiful teenagers from the Beverly Hills area code 90210. There it is. Now, nearly 30 years later, the gang is back in BH90210, a self-reflexive, self-deprecating, hilarious take on the reunion show genre. Let's take a look. 90210. It is time to do the reboot. Well, here we go again. Action! Coworkers are like family. You get all the same issues. Anger and resentment. This is going to be so much fun. Everybody, please welcome two of BH902 No stars and executive producers, Jenny Garth and Tori Spelling. Hi there, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Hi. Uh, congratulations on the reboot uh, reunion. How are you describing this? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> it's great. It's nothing that I expected it to be. It's extremely self-deprecating. Yep. I'm wondering, since all of you are playing different versions of yourself, heightened versions of yourself, what is that like giving each other the, you are executive producer, so what is it like when you give Jason Priestley, a script where Jason Priestley is doing something embarrassing as a character named Jason Priestley. Oh boy, yeah, that's fun. Really? <laughs> no, the, the more the more they hate it, the more we love it. <laughs> I mean, the good thing is when we approached them about this idea that we created, um, they were all on board for it, and we were like, okay, do you want to do a comedy? Do you want to go there and make fun of yourself? And every single one of them said yes. Mm -hmm. So that was the great part that we could kind of go there and know it would be okay. Do you feel like this was something you could have done after, like, when you were in the midst of this show or after this show was canceled? Do you think that you, as as actors and creators, take yourselves less seriously these years later and are willing to go there? Yeah, we've had a lot of time to sort of uh, grow and change and reflect um, and miss it. And you get know? knocked down to build yourself up yeah, again. That's right. We've all <laughs> taken some hits. And, yeah. and all those things make you stronger. And also just being able to take a look at people's perceptions of us. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Take a look at people's perceptions of us and turn that around and use it to our advantage and make fun of it and, and own it. One of the perceptions is, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, jokes in this uh, premiere episode, is when you are flirting with a young man in a pool and you're getting close to possibly sealing the deal with him and he refers to you as uh, your character's name from 90210 instead of your actual name. Yeah. Is that something that's ever actually happened to you in real life? Yeah. I mean, not the, <laughs> not, I mean, that not the guy in the pool in Vegas, but... <laughs> uh, You've been flirting like with someone and someone has referred to you as your... There was a pig farmer one time. <laughs> ah, there was. Oh, he plays a pig farmer, sorry. Yeah, the no, character. the guy in the yeah. pool is a pig farmer. Um, I don't think... Hey, who is the real pig farmer? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. Can we say? I think it's not based on a flirtation with her. It was just someone we met. And we oh. thought he was cute. And we then did. we used him to sort of create that character. It was one of the bachelors. Character. Yeah, it was the bachelor, the guy that... There was, was a farmer. Farmer. Oh, and okay. we you had a conversation, and he told Which me. Which one was he? I don't know. You guys know? Did you the, guys watch The Bachelor? He told me, I have, uh, I, I raise pigs. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> Great. And it made me more attracted to him, actually, which is weird. <laughs> not, re not weird at well, all, because I he's like interesting pigs. and he's different. That's a different thing to talk about. He has a great, She's like, pretty much vegan, so <laughs> that, like, That's killed true. every, like, ounce that, that could yeah. ever go anywhere. That would be weird. But nobody has ever, within the midst of a flirtation, called you Kelly? Probably. I have a bad memory. I'm going to go with yes. So you, the two of you have really been working on this for about two years now, right? Mm -hmm. And what was the initial idea? Was the initial idea to get everybody together and then we'll figure out what we're going to do? Or did you have a script ready to go when you gathered everybody? No, the initial idea was for us to start in it together. Just us. <laughs> really? <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. We, um, we, had, <laughs> we had worked together before, obviously, um, beyond 90210. We had produced and started in a show called Mystery Girls, and it was doing a comedy. Um, and we loved it so much, and we got to bring our kids to work every day. And since we are best friends in real life, we're like, we want to continue to do projects together that we're in and produce projects that go beyond just us being in stuff. And that's still an ultimate goal of ours. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to put it together, and we were talking about different ideas. And I called her. She was in New York, and I was like, is there something we could do with 90210? And she said, hell no. Yep. 
<laughs> it was it, we no it just wasn't the time and I, it didn't feel like the time to do a reboot and everybody was starting to, that was right when everybody was starting to do reboots mm -hmm. a few years ago and it just wasn't it didn't feel right so we thought let's do it differently if yeah. we can do this and do it differently and have a, some sort of a fresh take on it that's that's appealing or exciting to me as an actress. Like I want to do something different than playing Kelly again. And I know she felt the same way. And luckily uh, the rest of the cast felt the same way as well. And we have the unique upper hand, I think of a cast that wasn't just a huge cast from a, a series, you know, decades ago. It's actually a cast that are still relevant in their real lives. Like people still follow what they're doing personally. So I think that's why it also works because they want to know, you know, who Jason Priestley is in his real life and who Shannon Doherty are. You know, they want right. all In of his that. real life, he is a TV that. director. As well as he directs wanting TV, right? to see the characters as well. Yeah. Like, in his real life, he's a TV director. Brian Austin Green, in his real life, is not married to a pop star, but he is married to... A yeah, exactly. To a superstar who's <laughs> ostensibly slightly more famous than he is at certain times, which exactly. is something you play off mm -hmm. of in the show. Another thing that you play off of in the show mm -hmm. is the cast's relationship to Shannon Doherty, which has mm -hmm. always been something of rumor and gossip throughout the show's original run and before she left. What was it like pitching that idea to her and discussing that? Well, we used to hate rumor and gossip, and now we embrace it <laughs> to the full because it's what we can use in our show and be like, okay, you're going to write this about us. This is your perception, so we're going to write it into the show. So that was part of, and Jen and I met with Shannon, and, you know, all that stuff was so heightened by Blown the media. Added, yeah. It all became something that they wanted to use to sell stories, which was great. Um, so, But we just decided to take it back mm -hmm. and, and own it. And have fun with it, and that I think it comes through in the show, and 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 as the show progresses through the season, we use it more and more, and 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 see how that energy affects the the group. Well, there's a certain you do definitely take it back, and I, I don't want to spoil anything, but there is a certain bravery to having her her name introduced in the show, and the whole cast sigh, <laughs> <laughs> like they're so exhausted with the idea of her, mm -hmm. and then she appears, and they're all disappointed. I couldn't believe that you were actually like willing to go to that place. Obviously it's gonna be different as the show progresses, but was there ever a moment where Shannon was uncomfortable with that? Or I mean, how do you pitch that to someone? We were sensitive to how she felt about it for sure. And we, we all collaborated and came up with all of it together, but- um, Cause you look back on that time and she took the brunt, I mean, everybody had gossip and headlines, but mm -hmm. it was such a different time in the way that we talked about women and the way that we talked about actresses. She really took such a a beating, I think, in, in the press as being the reason that this happened and a diva and all these words that were slung at her at that right. time. Right, and I think a big part of that is she knows that was the perception that was put out there. So that's what made it okay for her to kind of embrace that and poke fun of it. Right. It's because it wasn't necessarily her, it was the media. And in this show, she's not her. She's yeah. Shannon Doherty, which... It's very confusing. That made no sense. But she's a character. She's a right. she's a high, she's a fictionalized character. Of as Shannon you are Dory. of yourself as well. Correct. And what was it like coming up with the fictionalized versions of yourself? Were there places you weren't willing to go that felt too close to the bone, or was the closer to the bone the better? There were definitely areas that I didn't want to go to. I mean, my character, for instance, is um, struggling with relationships and, and, and having, you know, that journey. And I have that in my real life. Relationships is a challenge for me. So to use that and, and sort of what I've learned from it and to use all that stuff from the past was is it makes for a great character. And, and there's so much history there. And I think all of our characters on the show are designed in that way that you can pull from your real life whatever you want and use that and you can leave whatever you don't want and just create whatever you can think of too. And we all ultimately produced this together. So we collaborated, everyone sat down and it was kind of a back and forth. Like, what are you willing to show? What do you not want to show? And they all, you know, created the characters that you're going to see in the series. Who do you think was willing to show the most? Who do you think on the cast was the most willing to be like, yeah, just do whatever. Take me apart, whatever. Us. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we were game for it. It was, it was fun. And Gabrielle. Gabrielle loved doing everything. She, her character, her storyline is great. Um, I love that she's actually the SAG president as well in the yeah. storyline that you guys Isn't played it with so that. Good, right? Yeah. Um, is there an element, you know, since 90210, and even since then, is there an element that you're getting 
to do more as actors in this show than you've gotten to do in a long time. I mean, when I was watching it, they are much more meaty role, meatier roles. And I think we've seen you get to play in, in a little while. Does it feel that way? Or am I underestimating Well, it things? just feels like it's fun for us to do that comedy and that self, self-deprecating sort of comedy. That's the stuff that I think is the funniest kind of comedy. So for me, that was the draw, was to be able to do that. And because we're doing a show that's about an ensemble cast playing fictionalized versions of themselves coming back together to film a straight reboot, we actually get to show a show within a show. So we end up playing what people would see if we did a straight reboot, but like the characters nowadays. So we get to do both. Right, that gives you a chance to sort of take iconic moments from the show and put it into this show Mm -hmm. within a show. What are some sort of iconic moments? Because this is a six-episode run currently. What are some of the iconic moments from the the series that we can expect to see within this six-episode run? Well, I think something that's kind of cool is that we use, um, in the the opening of every episode in this series, uh, is going to open on a dream or a nightmare, or whatever you want to call Depends it. Depends on what the person watching it thinks. <laughs> For me, it was almost a nightmare, getting putting the Kelly bangs back on. And, and it was like I looked in the mirror and I said, I, I feel different, but I look similar. It was very confusing. Um, so I think that that's a really cool um, sort of device that we use to open every episode. And then that... With the lens of one of right. the characters. And so then that will kind of be a, a thread that weaves through the episode. Oh, like the first one is your dream and the next one will be a different character's right. dream. Exactly. Um, obviously, uh, someone is missing from the cast, from the original cast, um, who we get a slight, who we get a tribute to at the end of this first episode. What was it like making this without Luke Perry and getting the news... Uh, of his um, tragic passing this this past year, it, it, it was, was obviously yeah. extremely difficult, and we it was hard for us to navigate how to handle it um, because before everything happened, he was a part of it and a great supporter, and obviously he was locked into Riverdale, but not only supported this, was on phone calls with. Um, the studio. Cheering us on. Yeah, yeah really. just so great. And I mean, I feel like you put it so nicely earlier about it was horrible what happened, but because of the show coming back at that very same time, we were all together when the tragedy hit. So at least we were back in each other's lives. And that was really the only family we wanted to be with mm-hmm. was each other. When so that you happened. were shooting when this happened? No, not when yet. When happened? No, oh. we but were we were just announcing. I think mm-hmm. announcing that it was happening that same day, in a weird world that happened on the same day, and um, none of us obviously could have predicted that or or anything like that. But like she said, instantly in those moments. All I wanted to do was be back with my brothers and sisters of that group. It's so interesting. I was because he was just uh, his last role, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the Quentin Tarantino movie. I saw an interview with Leonardo DiCaprio where Leonardo DiCaprio was talking, saying that he spoke to Luke Perry about that time on 90210 and how strange it was to be considered the new James Dean while he was on the show. Do you remember that period of time and what it was like for him while he was sort of considered the hottest man in in America and was called the new James Dean? I don't really remember it. I just know that that, that was a different time in the world and, and there was no social media then. There was no internet. There were barely cell phones. I mean, it was such a different time. <laughs> Whoa, we are so old. You just uh, aged so much. Um, but because he had a cell phone in it. <laughs> it was think. like a brick, That you know, that cell phone. Um, but... It, so the impact was different because we were working all the time and, and sort of sheltered from the outside world. We didn't really see that unless you left your house like later in the day to go to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> but it, he, he um, it didn't ever seem to uh, affect him or, you know, he just lived his life. I, I, I'll, he always did his own gardening, which I, I mean, even when he was working all day, uh, you know, on the show, he would find time to mow his yard. And I always thought that was something unique. Oh, wow. I mean, not that other people don't mow their own yards, but... No, I actually think I get what you're saying. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's just he's he was salt of the earth kind of a mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. 
Was there, uh, going into the six episode run, was there a favorite episode of yours that you wanted to make sure that you wanted to reference or get in there? There were a lot of moments that we kind of all collaborated and came up with and um, used some of the more memorable Mm -hmm. um, situations. We call it like little candy. Fan candy. Fan candy (laughs) that we drop throughout the series, whether it's stunt casting from people they'll recognize from the past if you watch the show. Um, For instance, like Christina Elise is in the show, Emily Valentine, uh, in a very pivotal but different role. Um, And so we tried to have something like that in every episode and definitely references, sorry, to like certain lines or storylines and character um, things that people would remember if they watched the show. Obviously, we want to play to every audience. So if you weren't a fan um, and you're just kind of getting into this, we want it to live on its own. But we also want to give, pay, um, pay what? Homage. 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 Both can work. You say tomato, I say homage. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> there you go. Um, the two of you in this first episode have a, a conflict and a fight with each other, and you've also been friends for quite some time. Do you mind your own personal relationship with each other for those kind of fights? Do the two of you have conflicts with each other or fight like friends do every now and then? Mo- every moment to moment. You never know who's going to be fighting with who. Um, no, we're just the type of friends that can say anything to each other and be honest and it's that easy like and if you get mad then you talk about it and you deal with it is that your phone dinging it's off the the sound is off and it's still dinging and i don't know how to do it do you want to know why look at her phone people do you see how broken it is i have five kids and no phone case and she wonders why it doesn't work right um see we're fighting right now conflict yeah so we don't yeah i feel like we've known each other for so long that we don't fight. We can tell when the other one's upset. It's like we can feel each other and we know when something's bothering the other one and then we just talk it out. Or we also know how to push each other's on. buttons so easily. Like no one else. Right. I can look at her a certain... If I just glance up a little... Yep. It she's sending me over the over right the now because I know she's looking at my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I heard in an interview with the two of you this morning that there is a, a Beverly Hills 90210 group text. <laughs> I'm wondering how long that group yeah. text has existed or if it is new for the show. That's how we, we contacted everyone to, to sit down and have a meeting about the con- concept of the show yeah. and getting it going. Did you meet with everyone individually or was it all together at once? We did a group, t- a a group, group text meeting. and then we text. did a group meeting at Gabrielle's house. Well, CBS first. Oh, that studio. was the first one, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Gabrielle's house. Can I ask who was the most apprehensive to do the show at first? Um, I don't think that Shannon felt quite ready to go all in right away. I know Ian was a little bit like not. It was just he wasn't a, sure if it should be a straight sure. reboot mm-hmm. or this version. But that's what collaboration's all about, and that's what. You know, that our group dynamic is all about is like getting together and talking it out and, and you know, putting it all on the table. It's so interesting that uh, Ian would feel that way because watching the first episode, I thought that it was interesting specifically for him to get to see him do scenes that where he's actually has hurt and is emotional in some way, which I don't think I've seen him do in a show or a movie in quite some time. Like, you actually gave him some real stuff to do. He's it's a great role. so yeah. funny. Like, that's what we really wanted mm-hmm. to showcase, his humor, because he's, oh, my God, like a comedic genius. Um, so getting him to do that, we are like, come on, you have to show us more. Like, do this, do that. Trying to get him to loosen up all the time and just be his zany self on camera. Which is so good. Uh-huh. But but what you're talking about, like, yeah. um, it's a role of a lifetime, if you really think about it. Yeah, that's what I... It's like... There's no better character for you to play than yourself. Because the hardest. Yeah, and it, and nobody ways. really knows what's real and what's not real and and I think that that's the beauty of it. Do you ever foresee a moment where you would be protective over what's real like maybe someone starts thinking that you are actually like this person on screen or have you found that no matter whether you're playing a fictional character or not people are going to think that? Well, I was a little worried honestly about it from the very beginning because Jenny comes into the show disliking Jason right out of the gate. And I was like, I don't, 
I don't know if they're going to, people are going to wonder why. Why does she not like him and what's happened? But then I thought maybe it's good that they are thinking what happened so that we can unravel that later. And we kind of do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we have time for a few questions from the audience. Who has a question? Hey. Hi. Hi um, my name is Andrew. I'm a huge, huge fan of 90210. And uh, recently, my family and I, we went to the beach and we read your books. And I was wondering um, what your writing process was like for the books for both of you and if it was difficult to go back and talk about um, all your experiences throughout the industry. That was a long trip to the beach. Because <laughs> don't you have like eight, nine, ten books? She has a six. lot. Six. Six. Six books. Six? I think it's six. Six. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. For me, it was very uh, cathartic. I locked myself in a hotel room in Santa Barbara and <laughs> just, you know, put things out and didn't sort of deciphered what I wanted to have in the book and what told the story. And for me, I think it was even before I did reality TV or kind of right at the same time I was starting it. So it helped me have a voice because when we did our show so many years ago, um, I don't think celebrities were seen. Nowadays, you know, you get to know celebrities and they show the personal side, but we weren't given that option. So however the public perceived us was all that came out. And you were like, I wish I could tell them who I really am. They would like me. Um, <laughs> they would that's like what me. I thought. <laughs> so writing my books were a chance for me to tell my stories and, and be like, here, here's who I really am, not the girl you thought I was. Mm -hmm. Uh, next question. Hello. Hi. I grew up watching both of y'all, and I think y'all are extremely talented. Thank you. Um, so I was just wondering, how does it feel to have support not only from your fans from 25 years ago, but now having a whole new generation of fans for this iconic show? Ah, uh, that's the coolest part of it. I mean, really, the the fans from the OG fans are are true you know, fans, and so we we really do try to um, honor them and make them happy when we're making the show. We thought about it all the time, about make, making sure that, that that audience is going to be satisfied. Um, and then hoping, just hoping that the new people that watch it for the first time will like it and, that's the, and see the sort of tongue-in-cheek in the comedy part of it and appreciate that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, I wanted to say to that that I feel like when we were in the midst of it, like when everyone were freaking out about the show, you know, 30, 20 years ago, it was hard to really understand how popular it was or what people saw in it because we were in the middle of filming, in the middle. It was happening around us, to us. Um, and then it was like 10 years later as I started to mature, as you do, you know, as you start to get older, you look back on things that happened to you much like high school and you're like, oh, this is what this was about. And I didn't, maybe I wasn't prepared for it. I would have handled it differently, but I never had that opportunity. And this time we keep talking about, it's like a do-over. Yeah. You get to go back. So I think we have that old audience, but we have a new audience and we also all have a new appreciation as adults getting to be in this scenario once again. And it's a cool opportunity to like look at yourself and sort of think, well, that's how I was then, and this is how I am now, and what was that journey, and what did I learn along those years, and use all of that to sort of create what you want to be now. And I think as people, that's what we do, hopefully, every day is try to check in and say, I I've been there, done that, let me do something differently, you know, in way ways that are going to benefit me more or differently. Uh, one more. Oh, hi. Um, my dad and I are both really big fans of the show. And um, I was just wondering, uh, <laughs> um, I was just wondering uh, what it was like being a part of a series that, tac that was targeting teens that tackled such difficult topics um, back, like, in the 90s mm -hmm. versus now. Yeah, well, it was a... It was groundbreaking in that it was the first show um, that really gave teens a voice and the parents of teens mm -hmm. a voice. And it gave that sort of platform for parents and their kids to talk about sensitive, you know, issues that maybe would make them uncomfortable. Um, and we got to do so many great messages in, in that way. But I think that the, the reason that those 
worked was because people could relate with the characters and feel felt like, oh, I feel that way too, or I'm going through that too. And it's so nice to talk about it or see it being talked about, you know? Which we're hoping to do with this new show because they connect it with the characters, they connect it with the actors. And what I think people really connect it with was the friendship that they could tell we all truly had. It wasn't just... We started as actors cast into roles, but what we became was truly a family on every level um, and a bond that no matter how much time passes can never be broken or recreated. And so you couldn't do a new show with people that are just cast into this role. So what we're trying, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I was so into it. I was like, oh, that sounds so nice. And then I forgot. Um, <laughs> but um I think now on the show, as adults, we're sending that message too. Like this is real. We talk about real friendships and real romances and what things are like for people of our age group. But I think everyone can relate to it. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely can. I loved what I saw. It's so funny. It's so smart. It premieres this Friday, right? Wednesday. Wednesday. Excuse Wednesday. me. Oh, I thought it was so, so, excuse me. You confused me. I was like Friday. Wait. <laughs> Am I, I was wrong? confused. Sure. It's my fault. Uh, it's called BH 90210. Uh, let's give Tori and Jenny a huge round of applause for being Thank on Bill. Thank you. Thank you so much.